grass is tinder dry. Fire has been a factor here for millions of years. The grass burns rapidly and the fire spreads quickly. These spots of flame and smoke flush insects from the grass, so they're a huge attraction for kites and kestrels. Fire. Thousands of tons of dry grass is enough to fuel a blazing inferno. Flames can provide a feast. Migrating sand martins brave the smoke to take advantage of the tiny insects that flee the flames. A welcome windfall to a bird on a thousand mile journey from Africa to Europe. This looks like devastation. The grass has been burnt away, and so have the seedling trees. But because grasses store energy underground in their roots, within days, new sprouts push through the fertile ash. Grass may be tough enough to survive even the hottest fire. But there is one force of nature here that grass cannot defend against. It's an extraordinary creature, and it only comes out at night. A hippopotamus has a mouth half a meter wide, built for devouring grass, 40 kilograms in one sitting. A fussy eater, it only likes short grass, which it tears up with great lips. Hippopotamus roam for miles between dusk and dawn in search of good grazing. But there's a limit to their range, and they must turn around and head back to water before the sun rises. 
life on Earth is powered by the sun. The closest star to our planet. Its life-giving rays take just eight minutes to reach us. Striking the Earth head-on at the equator, it's here that they deliver the most intense solar energy on the planet, enabling life to flourish. Thanks to its location just south of the equator, the Serengeti sun rises high in the sky throughout the year, delivering 12 hours of intense solar energy every day. With few trees to shade the ground, the animals here have learned to deal with the blistering heat of the dry season. Some have resorted to rather extreme measures. The marabou stork has one of the strangest cooling systems in the Serengeti. This peculiar bird defecates on its own legs, turning them white. And as the droppings evaporate in the hot sun, it cools the bird in much the same way as our sweat. But as the sun's heat turns the grasslands to tinder, life on the savannah is about to change. One spark is all it takes. A fire is born. Whipped by the wind, it rages across the sun-baked land consuming over half of the Serengeti every year. Animals large and small race to escape the flames. But for the marabou stalks, the fire brings food. Each fleeing insect a protein-rich snack. They flock to the burning grasses from miles around to feast amidst the chaos. As the fire starts to retreat, others brave the heat, patrolling the front line for easy pickings. Eventually, the fuel runs out and the flames die. The savannah, a scorched and blackened land. But the grasses here have evolved with fire storing their resources safely below ground in starch-rich roots. And the rainy season brings all the moisture they need to flourish. Ripened by the constant sun and fertilized by ash, the savanna grows anew. Some grasses gaining up to three centimeters in just 24 hours. Once again, the fire brings feast. This surge of life from the ashes feeds the next generation. The new shoots are rich in essential minerals for nursing mums. And plenty of grass means plenty of milk. In just three weeks, half a million wildebeest calves are born in the Serengeti. Unlike the devastating forest fires in the Amazon rainforest, grass fires have been a natural process here for hundreds of millions of years. Driven by the sun, this cycle of renewal supports the greatest herds on the planet. Without it, these rich savannas and the incredible life within them would likely disappear. In the midday sun, the cold spring creek is the only place to be. But while she's been cooling down, her cubs have wandered off. She smells trouble first. 
a wildfire, burning out of control. The cubs smell it too, but don't understand. They've never smelled smoke before. Instinct takes over. They run for the trees. But in a wildfire, that's the worst thing to do. The wind pushes the fire closer. Trapped up the trees, the cubs could be burned alive. Mother calls them down. She leads them around the blaze, upwind, away from the heat and smoke. Of all the forest's dangers, fire is the biggest killer. September in the mountains, when summer heat turns to autumn chill. For mother bear, it's a time of reckoning. The cubs have survived so far, but have they eaten enough to get them through the winter? They've certainly filled out and look like miniature versions of their mother. But there's still room for more food, and mother continues to teach them how to find pine nuts, acorns, and berries. The bears consume thousands. The cub's father is back on the scene and leaves his calling card. For now, he's no threat to the cubs. Berries are his consuming passion. He's a non-stop eating machine, putting on over 30 pounds a week. As the valleys start to flood, swimming is the quickest way to search for a fresh berry patch. Fattening up is the only thing on his mind. He won't be interested in mating until early next summer. <laughs> 